you, Becky. Becky is at sea today. Those are on camera. Yours truly behind the wheel. Sunday afternoon in Africa. Welcome to our world of... Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it this afternoon. Glad we could make it this afternoon. Yes. So what are we going to do? Nothing to do. Well, no. Of course we want to do something special. I mean, there's nothing planned. Plans always go awry. So nothing planned as yet. Yes. What's that back button working? Uh, nobody. 1500 hours. What is today? The 30th of June, isn't it? Not, not the last day of June today. I think it's the third. I don't know. It's going to be off the third. It's going to be Flight mode, instrument may, or rather, telephone, yeah, cell phones may interfere with instrument mode. Machine. Might alter our flight pattern. Might alter the whole course of events. So it is the last day of June in this year 2013. Or, well, depending on what calendar you want to watch, you look after the past different dates and um, times in history. Um, date, of, after all, it's just a man made thing. There's, there's no such thing as a date. Days of weeks and weeks of months. Solar calendars and lunar calendars. Okay, we haven't created it. We've just we've just mapped it. So what we've created is the actual time frame going back to human things. So artificial.
Head in a northwesterly direction or mostly west and then maybe north. I'm going to try and turn the pilot a little bit. Must be drinking. This is where that young male lion was asking me the other day. Crossing the river. Sadly, obscured by all the reeds.
main concern is going to be the raft tracks on top of my from today. The main concern is going to be seeing where those other things went to. Partly cloudy this afternoon, it's going to Not even partially cloudy, just a little bit of cloud that seems to be hanging out over the sun, which suits me fine. It's been a, uh, the day got quite warm again today. And since we have to drive more or less into the sun, it's quite fine. Like there's a bit of. Ooh, got to drive over it. Track. Driving northwest with a bit of cloud covering the sun. Why it's very bright. Becky, you need to go back to school. Okay, Shelly. Yeah. Oh, these rock. I think this must have been those bulls that we've been seeing because if you look at these tracks in the road here yeah, from these rocks, they've been fighting again. Shelly was asking, can you tell from the tracks whether they're specific individuals? Yes, you can, sometimes. Um, most of the time you can, and it's mostly a guessing game because invariably when it comes to leopards, you only have a certain individuals within their own territory, so you get you, you get used to the size of their tracks and the particular positioning of their feet. Um, so most of the time you can't really be wrong when you see a set of tracks and you know whether it's if it's male, you know which male it is, and if it's a female, you know which female it is, based on the territory that they live in and the territory that they, they occupy. However, every now and then you do get individuals that have an anomaly with one of their feet, maybe a toe pointing out or uh, a foot that's particularly turned in or turned out of, or a limp even, um, and you tend to see that translated into the track. So, generally the answer would be yes tell individuals from their tracks based on not so much the actual track itself but the date, the, the, the information you keep in your head about the different individuals in different areas but then there are always those characters who have some anomaly. Carry a particular feature that does translate to their footprint. Much the same as we do their gait, their health, even sometimes whether they full or empty in terms of whether they've eaten a big meal or not. When lion are heavy they drag their feet a little bit, but their paws lay out more because they're carrying sometimes up to 20 odd more kilometers, kilograms.
trace of these elements. See now that I'm turning right into the sun cloud one that I was talking about. I think we got to be first to run. Thank you, Benny. on how deep they are and how much water is in them and how late the rain fell and sometimes they carry right through the winter and sometimes they dry up before the winter even starts but nonetheless the fact is that some do and some don't and when the, some of the water holes or dams dry up and some of them don't when the crops find themselves in well normally they'd be leaving the water before it starts drying drying up but also normally they'd find themselves in some water that's likely to stay throughout the dry season because they know the area and they're likely to make a good selection. Tomorrow and the next day comes along and okay the dam's drying up, I'll move tomorrow. And then the next day a big herd of buffalo come along and they drink up a few thousand gallons of water and so it starts drying up a bit quicker and the next day suddenly the crocodiles on dry land, where's it going to go? It's probably going to go to the next dam that hasn't dried up. Uh, in this part of the world, obviously this is different, it can't be said for the rest of Africa that that's what crocodiles do, because everywhere else there are different criteria, there are different dams, different water holes, different rivers, different conditions. But if we're just talking about thorny bush alone, and thorny bush you can't even say is anywhere like Rusabi sand or anything like Timberbark. So. One of the reasons why I say, or when I answer things and I start to answer with it depends, because I don't want to give the impression that what, although this is Africa, and although the animals here are all African mammals, and this is, this is Africa, this is one tiny little pinhead of a prick of Africa, in terms of its size compared to the rest of Africa. And every single wildlife area, every single Game is a national park area that you go to south of the Sahara. Things will be different. And so this is one of those cases where I can only answer for thorny bush. But there are a few crocodiles in some of these dams, and I would imagine that by now, over time, because some of these dams are permanent, some of them are temporary, I'd say that the crocodiles have pretty much worked it out. Which ones are permanent, which ones aren't, and should they maybe lose them, they'll know where the permanent ones are. Probably because they've moved around a lot, especially in the West East. So, not that much of an easy question to answer, or rather, straight, it's not a straightforward answer to a simple question. Which is like, is straightforward. There's so many things that influence the answer to a question, start with the answer. Thank you. <laughs> Even it depends, depends. So we... And I'm going to use this cut line going up to Nanzan Road. No, Vicky, just one word. No. Um, and so we're going to head up this cut line to see whether these elephants have crossed this road. In fact, we might just take a loop. We, in fact, we better take a loop through to Long One Dam and then back again. And then once we see we can go and find the Elias. The Kudus have run away. 
Yes, Vicky. What have you got for me? Malawan Katma. I think that's pretty much it. That is the simple matter of it. It makes a good track as someone who has to who, who can simply someone who can track. Someone who knows what they're doing, they can identify the age of tracks, but also someone who has been doing it forever and has become a second nature is identifying the letters of an alphabet to anyone who could read. I wish it was a little bit more complex than that. I'm not really seeing any tracks with this chest anymore, but as I said, so many vehicles have driven up and down here. If it was walking in the road, so many vehicles would have been driven. Now, I'm going to turn around to my point. Someone who can find the subtle, very, very subtle signs in the hardest packed soil. I want to definition of a good tracker is someone who can track a cat over granite. Of course that's pushing things a bit. But it's not impossible because a cat will leave dust marks even on granite. It'll leave paw prints and being able to find them. Well, this cat hasn't left me anything to go by. It's a big male track underneath all that giraffe sitting east, but that's very old. There's got to be at least two for those old. There's another big male track coming out onto this road. Another track going the other way. Lion have been here, but only in two days ago, not in the past. Okay, well, while we're here, then, instead of turning around, let's continue. Continue heading west. I will go first to Waxel Dam. Then we'll see after that. So then we'll maybe loop around to
Rachel in New Jersey, what animal do I like? And I know that they relax the vehicles and get excited. The more track these young male leopards, the more it seems that they just hide away when we get close to them. It's, it's like, in fact, the left here at Thorny Bush. It seems they don't like being tracked. They like to track accidentally, and then but if you're on their tracks, then they start grass and they hide away on finding. I like to track lion too, first thing in the morning, because I know that most of the time if they, if I've got their tracks, I'm going to find them walking on the road or close. Fun thing to track, although it's a little bit gruesome and it's a little bit ornery wise, is the the drag or the drag mark of a leopard kill. Because as soon as you find it, it's almost ninety five percent that you're gonna find it. Because you can that it's made it takes its kill to a particular place where it's either gonna put it in a tree or hide it under a bush. And if you talk about the thing almost guaranteed you're going to find the leopard. Terribly, it's going to be fairly fresh, and because the leopard eats the carpet, it's all good. Working and I'm at home. I wake up. I mean, my body clock pretty much the same time every day, but I don't get time to see what. And I do what I have to in the morning, and then I take my cup of tea and I walk outside onto the little track that walk, that, that goes past now. And I'll have a look which animals walk past the house that night or that morning. And then I'll take a walk around the other side of my house, come to the driveway, coming into my bungalow, and then I'll have a look which animals are actually in camp, walking around my Land Rover and things during the night. And then I'll finish my tea and something like that. And I'll get into my landy and I'll go and follow whatever it was, and sometimes I won't. Maybe there wasn't anything worth following. So, it's not only if I I suppose, in a way, I actually spend more time with my eyes on the ground than scanning the bush. Most of the time what's on the ground tells me what I'm going to find in the bush. Or what's been around. Yeah, we'll go, go. Okay, just to make me laugh. Okay, Bob, does a good person need to know which way that animal is moving? That would probably be, Bob, that would probably be the first, the first step in identifying a good tracker or not. Point to an animal track and say, so is it going left or right? And he would say, it's going left. He said, beep, wrong answer, you're not a tracker. And then one would say, yeah, it's going to the right, okay. First, first hurdle. They say, okay, what animal is the wrong answer, beep, you lose, you're not a good tracker. 
But yes, Bob, it's pretty evident to see which way animals are moving. There's a wildebeest at the dam, another buffalo at the time. We're at Wackerfield Dam. We're approaching Wackerfield. There's wildebeest and buffalo. Well, that's rather strange. So many people say, well, what's the difference between a wildebeest and a buffalo? Well, you want to know what the difference is? I'm going to show you. Although, the buffalo's lying down, so is one of the wildebeest, and there are a couple of other wildebeest standing around, milling about. They're going to be booked for loitering very soon, because they need it lying in the shade or lying in the mud, and just standing around. But that's actually a beautiful shot. We've got a wildebeest standing over a buffalo. But it's so far away. There's a wildebeest standing over two wildebeest and two buffies. In a herd or group of, a, of animals or of a species, if an animal is injured, will it be rejected? Generally not, Suzanne. I, mean, I could have started that with it depends because, but then I actually can't think of anything where it will be rejected, except under certain circumstances. But generally speaking, no. Generally speaking, the fact that animals are gregarious means that they have some connection to each other, and they are it's not necessarily altruistic, but they are bonded in some ways that in a lot of herding species you do get protective individuals over others especially things like buffalo um, elephants others but it depends on circumstance to a large extent because sometimes you might have elephants who have an injured calf or they have a calf that is weak and the matriarch still needs to get her herd another 20 miles to water and they know that that calf's not going to make it. And if they stand around trying to help the calf, then she puts the entire herd in danger and at times like that, that if a matriarch will know that to save her family, to save her herd, she has to leave the calf. And it must be a very, very hard decision to make because it's, easy, it's better to save the herd than to lose the herd trying to save a calf and another calf can be produced. So, some circumstances, yes, and most circumstances, no, I guess. Generally, injured animals are looked after by the rest of the herd, or group, or troop, or pride, or whatever the collective noun may be. But generally speaking, which means that there are always exceptions, and circumstances change those exceptions. So there you have it, folks. Looking at buffalo and wildebeest together. I mean, if you look at the size of that buffalo, even though they're sitting down, they're still twice the size of the wildebeest. Those are those wildebeest are both buffalo wannabes. They're hanging around the buffalo as if they're gonna instantly transmogrify into a buffalo and get bigger. Kind of by the osmosis thing.
doesn't work that way. Two batches of both, except the two buffalo are what we might call Togo boys, and these two wildebeest, well, they're just two bachelor boys. They haven't found themselves in territory to, to, to prepare. It does look like there's a little bit of posturing going on between the two. The one now on the left is intimidating the one on the right. Are oh, they going to battle now? Right. See how the other one is acquiescing. The other one is not, not, not accepting the challenge of the one that is now on the right. Keep backing down. He doesn't want to have a confrontation. For whatever reason, the other one is trying to intimidate him. Unless he decides that this is yeah, territorial behavior going on. So now this one is rolling the dust and pretend this is his. My friend. Probably get up and poop in it just to prove a point. Now, the other one's going to do the same thing. He's going to say, No, this is my friend. Watch it, watch this. Okay, you're going to dig now. Somebody pressed the pause button. Worried if we go on the damn wall, we're going to be looking too much into the sun, and then the sun will be reflecting off the water, it's going to blind us. So this is our best view at the moment, not that great. But also, I would like to move along, get up to Longwine Dam. Let's go and see Mildred. Terrapins in this little dam. Oh, there's got to be 20 terrapins hanging out next to the dam wall here. Are we going to get any of them? Saddle flying back to its nest on the horizon. Actually, you know what? That's flying from its nest. Yeah, going to somewhere else where they must be feeding during the day and catching food for their baby. Somewhere southwest of their, their nest, because their nest is actually just north of us. So 
So let's look at those wildebeest quickly. And the buffalo. And that other one standing there looking at the other wildebeest. Lying there with the buffalo and he's like, he's almost like he's saying, Really? You're crossing over to their side? Or something, I don't know. Think of a dozen captions. Lying with the buffalo. Shall we move? But he's on a handheld radio. Battery going flat. Hello, Mike. Mike and Riverlight.
another down. We'll go to not go and we'll just continue see if elephant cross any other road. Out here to the west and then we'll slowly make our way, sort of wind our way so we maybe find some of the rest track. There are some elephants up in the north. They turned off after being where they were this morning. Could well be. We shall find out when we get closer. And maybe we find some tracks.
remember correctly the junction I've just turned on where I saw some young lion tracks and there was nothing up that road. But that doesn't mean anything because it wasn't very fresh and so many vehicles were driven there this morning. But maybe it might have come up this way. Not seeing anything. Turning around, turning in. Not a lot, just two. bugging your ears a little bit. All on the bank, but sadly looking into the sun. I'm sure there are a few animals out today.
slowly you can do it on Hopefully it works on this side better with the light Record a quick pan shot for Lesla. There's a close long one there. It's not like anything down there, but I can't see just yet. Somebody calling at the moment. A couple of notes from the boo boo here and there, but nothing really that I can point out. Had a quiet in the afternoon. Okay. temperatures the water gets cooler so what happens is it gets more oxygenated to some degree and the sediment starts sinking down the water does get a little bit cleaner 
Well, that doesn't look very clean, but just looking at our crocodile, you can see the shape of her just under the surface. Pretending to be a log. If I don't move, they can't see me. If I don't move, they think I'm a piece of wood. I don't know what they're forming a piece of wood for, but. I don't know, ask her. I think she's thinking about how nice and warm and sunny the Sunday afternoon is. The crocodile knows what a Sunday afternoon is. The crocodile just knows what a sunny afternoon is. The same way we do there. They make okay. themselves positively buoyant with action, but I would I would imagine she's actually got her tail supporting her on the ground. She might even be have her toes touching the ground. But they are able to vary their buoyancy depending on the mountain. Excuse me, Anna. The fact that she's got her body mostly submerged, like I told me, that she's actually anchored to the ground. If she was going to be floating, her body would be, she'd take in more air, and her body would be on the surface. So I think she exhaled a little bit, and she's keeping her body negatively buoyant. She's got her tail and her feet on the ground. And that's how she's able to stay in one place. I'm going to move. If he's not, I'm going to move. Goodbye, Mildred. Bye-bye, girl. See you later. Hello, Becky. Yes, what is the question? Hello, Amy in Minnesota. How old is this croc? I have a face It is virtually impossible to age a crocodile. Virtually impossible. It is entirely impossible. It is physically impossible. It is out of the realm of possibility. To age a crocodile just looking at its head above the water. However, since we know it's a female and we know that it was put here, maybe they had some idea when they put it here. 
if they do I'll ask them but other than that there's no way of knowing you see it depends crocodiles aging crocodiles growth patterns rather are not concomitant with aging in other words some crocodiles who eat well can grow quicker than some crocodiles who don't eat so well. So crocodile aging isn't a matter of testing by looking at its size and saying, oh, that's a, that six to eight foot crocodile is going to be ten years old. So unfortunately, I don't know, Amy. I really don't know. got a bit of dust. Yes, I know it's very squeaky. I'm well aware of it. Thank you. I'll find, find a place where I can sort something out. If you just pick up a grain of sand or a bit of dust and it's starting to squeak, I will try and fix it shortly. It's fairly fresh elephant feeding now there's a track this is here's the way ok I just want to try and find a place where I can actually get underneath the car and try and lubricate it a bit if that grain of sand isn't going to change the way what is that? It's a termite now. Pretending to be an elephant. <laughs> Impala. Impala. Back to that torchwood tree that he went to the other day. It's the same elephant. Yeah.
the ten crashes. Ten crashes. Maybe I'm wrong. I should have left my camera in my car because then we would have seen something. And it is my sacrifice. Yes, Becky. Good afternoon to the Netherlands, to Kurt Jan in the Netherlands. Wondering if there are any snakes around. He sees me walking around, wondering if there are any snakes. Uh, there are snakes. I see some tracks, especially on a warm day like today. Kurt Jan, I really don't know if you will see snakes. I can't say yes and I can't say no. I can't even say it depends. Not something that one can predict. It is the winter month. The moment it is winter, but our days are hot enough for elephants to be moving around. Uh, elephants, this is never elephants on the brain. Snakes, sorry, snakes. Hot enough for snakes to be moving around during the day, but they will be mostly inactive at night and in the morning. You might be lucky if you go to Kruger next week, you might be lucky to see a snake, especially because they have tar roads. Tar roads get quite hot, and there might be snakes out hunting themselves in the morning. I really couldn't tell you if you're going to see or not. You might. There's always a possibility. Always a chance you may. Because winter doesn't mean anything.
goodness, this effort on top of my track. When, I mean, we were up and down this road for elephants this morning, and the cat... No, this was earlier, because there's ant lion trails in, in this track. Oh, a couple of hours. The Ingwe that was down at River Lodge this morning has now come up Mangawan and headed up towards Nyaleti on top of Mount Kwanza from this morning. Uh, I did that on top of other people talking probably. Go ahead. Uh, negative. Uh, there was only that one set of old tracks from yesterday morning heading west towards those water tanks. I, I haven't done much on the south part of the river. Mongo 1 extension I can't do because it's got a signal, but I'm on Mongo 1 at the moment. I'm trying to pick up on the door that I had audio this side this morning. I've got to be saying that unfortunately I can't broadcast from there. I can't follow this thing where he's also heading north. Son of a leopard. There's a buffalo in the room. Sand again. 
Jai. Jai. be running out of petrol as soon as I start pointing it up a little slope it cuts out. Imagine even if they were in parlor there that were drinking and the crop made a play for them and she missed or even if she caught one and they got a big fright and they knew that there was a crocodile there. I think she goes, you have to speak, I'm talking. I think they would forget about it to some degree. They'd be aware that there's a predator and they would just be very, very wary when they do drink there. Um, but no, I think the drive and the desire and the need for water overcomes those fears and I don't think it makes much of a difference. Otherwise crocodiles would starve to death. I think crocodiles survive based on the short memory of most mammals. Or rather the short term lack of memory. Or rather the lack of short term memory. I'll get it right sometime. But you know what I mean. Animals forget. They're not like elephants. Speaking of which. How does a what find a mate? How does a Mildred find a mate? Oh, that's assuming Mildred wants a mate. But, how does Mildred find a mate? When the rains come, eventually, and we have good rains, if we do, and the dam fills up and overflows, possible that she will follow it downstream or upstream. In fact, it's quite possible that if it started drying up, she would find her way downstream to find other dams or a main river. Um, or she would migrate to another dam where there are other crocodiles and there might be a male there. 
see what I mean. Look at that, I've got more than a quarter of a tank, but the chicken just doesn't like going uphill today. they come and if they're good rain, it's possible that a male crocodile will make his way up the river or from one of the dams, or a male crocodile might be at one of the other dams that might be drying up, he makes his way to that dam to find the boulders, and falls instantly in love, marrying crocodile heaven, and lo and behold, it's not the greatest piece of water to raise baby crocodiles. It does have some nice backwater, but unlike some of the other bigger dams, especially where the, the hippos are, this is a dam called Boulder Dam, where there are some hippos that has some lovely backwater. For baby crocodiles. A nursery area. Crocodiles need a nursery area. Maybe Mildred's not old enough. Maybe she's still a teenager in crocodile turf. She's not ready to lay any eggs yet. Maybe Mildred will be the first crocodile in the history of crocodiles to reproduce parthenogenetically. However, that is unlikely. I'm trying to think, there was geckos. Uh, what else is this? It's a fairly large animal that is able to reproduce the process of parthenogenesis. Well, certain species, when there is no male, they just, they're able to produce fertile eggs. And in some species, those offspring will be males, so that parthenogenesis is not necessarily any longer. And some of those species, males don't exist, the only way that that animal reproduces. Cell division, mitosis, whatever it's called. Forget my biology. Biology teaches out there on the Sunday break, summer break. What is cell division? Isn't that called mitosis? Cell division? As opposed to meiosis? Or is it meiosis? I don't know. I'm forgetting. Meiosis, mitosis. I remember what osmosis is. I sleep with a book under my pillow so that maybe my brain can absorb through osmosis. It's the knowledge that is in the book. So far, it doesn't work. You've actually got to open the pages and read the book. Even if the subconscious only picks it up. Gardenias and the jasmine, that, that's got to be the best scenting flowers here in the bush. Um, animal smells, the defense smell of maybe a white tailed mongoose, like a skunk, you know. Um, we do have a skunk type animal that also has that. Depends. Okay, I shouldn't have said that, sorry, I didn't mean to say depends. But depends. Uh, I need a cinnamon. Cinnamon. Uh, 
according to whether one is referring to the defense mechanism that an animal uses versus the dust. Because there are a couple of animals out here who just the sheer nature, just the sheer smell of their dung is enough to put anything off. But they don't use it as a defense. It's just, just that they're done. Look, there's a hard shape leaf for one. The romantic in me. Actually, it's supposed to be a round leaf. Because it comes from a round leaf. You see, lion dung is awfully smelly. Really, really bad. And it would be a pretty close call to compare it with baboon dung. Lion dung and baboon dung have to be two of the most smelliest, foulest smelling things you could ever, you could ever unfortunately put your foot into. Now, I know most of you out there are not likely to put your foot in lion dung or in baboon dung, but uh, trust me, it happens. What can be worse even is if you're driving over lion dung and a lion sighting and they've had a kill, and they like a big kill, buffalo or giraffe, and they've been there for about three days. Uh, the first dung that comes out after they've been feeding on a kill, because it's mostly meat and blood they've been feeding on, is very runny and very dark and black, and it's just blood and a little bit of meat. But then when they start eating other parts of the animal, oh my word. You can be grateful for the fact that smell vision hasn't been invented yet. But sometimes I've had this missed opportunity, this misfortune. This opportunity is not a word, I just made it up. This misfortune of driving over lion dung while driving around a lion fighting with that kid. And then. Stuck on the fire right in front of me. And all I can do is gag every time the wheel goes round. Yeah, it was just me. It was just it, oh, it is terrible. Even hyena dung isn't that bad. Hyena dung is not that bad. Leopard dung is not too bad. Leopard dung is much more compact. Maybe it's because lion dung is just so big. This leopard went that way. Maybe we need to go east, not west. This leopard went the other way. Maybe it's not back. And here are elephant tracks heading back. Wow, I've got the elephant. Ooh, something more kosher here. Every time I get a little bump in the road. You know, I carry around a little bit of petrol just in case. The guys are showing that it's still quite full. Well, not full, but it's still quite a bit. But I think that is just telling me that when I start going up a little slope like that, it's sucking air with a fuel injection. I don't want to run it too dry. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of gas in this. Let's go back to that junction. No, not at all. Fine. Um, Maybe put the other sound up or something. Maybe there'll be a bird sound.
Здравствуйте, да, Дига. It works faster than the original sound. But the uh, is so much bigger. The other one is so narrow, it used to take a time that was 8 minutes, 20 meters. Okay. Yeah, that took all of maybe 2 minutes. Yeah. And I didn't spill a drop. Desert warfare with ground drums. Why? So much more convenient. The Germans are so clever. They have square drums. They use their drums. The UK, they use a square can. Deutsche Technik. It's interesting thing because the design has been, hasn't changed. Since then, no, it's been the same design. It's invaluable with the Land Rover. It's just standard. You always just take a jerry can with you because you never know how much longer you're going to be than you intended. Okay, well, having said that, and having done that, and having seen that, this leopard might have gone east.
back to Heart Media. Hello, James. Good afternoon, Squire. How big did the baboon get? We saw some baboon at the end of the drive this morning, yesterday, for some. How big do they get at the shoulder? About that big. About that, that, about that big. Um, okay, that's a joke. Uh, let me see. Probably if they're on all fours, probably about two and a half feet. I don't know, James. What? I'm not sure. I'll have to look in the book and see what they say at the shoulder height. You know I'm not good with numbers. Look how pretty this light. Can we just find an elephant? No, or a leopard? No, it's in this light. Beautiful daylight. Um... Jonathan Kingdom. Let's see what Jonathan has to say. He even looks like you, Jane. Sort of, kind of like a big white beard and all. There we go. Crown monkey, Dennis monkey, Mona monkey, 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 manga bees. There we go. Mandrel. Check my baboon measurements. Head and body length. For a check of the boot. This is our species of the boot. The Shakma. Um, 50 to 80 centimeters. So 50, that's to 50 centimeters, that's like 20 inches. 80 centimeters, call it 30 something inches. For the females, males up to 1.1 meter, so just over a, a meter at the shoulder. For a big male, uh, shoulder height for a female 40 to 60 centimeters. That's easier, 24 inches. 75 centimeters for a male. That's like two and a half feet. Shoulder height. That's what I said, isn't it? Yeah. 75 centimeters, that's like 30 inches. Two and a half feet at the shoulder. That's how big a baboon is, the big male. Thank you, Jonathan. I see, actually, the other day I was at Royal Malawan and I was acting with Juan, the head ranger there. And he was he had a book on the counter. Very nice mammal book actually. I think I must get it because in terms of showing you especially, I don't know how much longer I'll be doing this. I'd like to do this forever, but I don't know in terms of our live drives here at Thorny Bush and if I moving on. Um it's just a really nice book to show guests. It's just a really wonderful it's quite a the one page is the photographic plate big plate of, uh, it's cut in half, so half of the plate, half of the page is a picture of the male, half of it is a picture of the female, and, sorry, I just have to stop a second, um, um, so it shows a nice picture of both male and female of every species. And then also, it gives you the track and the, the, the dung and all the, the body measurements and things. And, and less information, more technical factors. But it's uh, uh, quite an interesting new mammal book.
I should get it. I don't remember what it's called. Hearing anything. Here we go. We've now lost the light on sort of ground level. On top of the maroon tree is still picking up a bit of this light, pink light. Wood that I could, I will show you a sunset. Found any orchids? Although there's one flowering next door at Timberbody Safari Lodge for about to flower. There's one flowering at the T Junction as we leave the game reserve. Jennifer, friendly hint from Jennifer. We read a book called Whatever You Do, Don't Run. Somewhere in the book, I can't remember whose author was. I know I didn't read it. I like kudos. Um, saying that orange tail up your nose. Ah, but therein lies the rub. You have to have orange peel. Put up your nose to begin with. You see, 
here I would be able to take, if I could find some um, citrus bush, I would put the leaves, put up my nose, would probably do the same thing. Or I could just do what I normally do, just breathe through my mouth. Try not to smell. Depends on how old the carpet is sometimes. It can be really overwhelming. Like one of those big animals, like giraffe or buffalo or something, been dead for a couple of days in the heat of the summer sun of Africa. Oh, then, and sometimes you can't park anywhere but downwind. That can be a challenge. Of note. Then your guests have to decide whether they want to see what they want to see. With, or if they want to see it that badly that they can withstand the storm. Orange peel not always easy to come by out here, believe it or not. Well, you could do what the pathologists do. They just put big vapor rub on their nose, in their nose. Then you can keep it handy like I do with my camera bag. Big snake tracks yesterday. This was big. That was must have been Piper. Piper or Piper and one of the two huge snakes. Probably about that wide. About maybe four or five inches wide. Hey squirrel. Uh, sorry, what's the lock of those in law, please? Copy, thank you. Thank you, the crossing. Oh, far away. Look how beautiful those mountains are. Hey squirrel. Hey squirrel. Maybe it's because the bush is getting thinner now and we're getting to see the squirrels a bit more. Yeah. I think most of it was from the flood we had last year, in January. I mean, that, that could be like one year, or one big rain, like this, the way that road. I had that at home, a couple of roads that were running down and sloped towards the river. Pretty intense erosion in a 24 hour period. In fact, like some places, 10 15 years worth of erosion in a 24 hour period because it was relentless. This is what happens when you get two years of rain in a 24 hour period. In fact, it was only 18 hours. Two years worth of rain in 18 hours. Back to Alveda Pan. See if any characters have made their way here today. We'll go across.
across the river and keep the eye on the scene at all. Well, the one has moved. I did go past this day. I played taxi today. I had to take someone somewhere, I had to fetch someone somewhere. And coming back in, I decided to go past. Not even a vulture there anymore. Just a couple of legs and the skull. A bit of skin, a bit of the mane. that is better suited to something like a BMW 328i or even the 528 but yeah even the BMW 528 at the time of course that's exactly what this engine is it is a 2.8 litre 6 cylinder fuel injected BMW engine and if you all know anything about BMW, they're not really designed for driving around dirt roads, second gear. They want to be opened up, they want to go... Yeah, they just want to race. I've got to hold these horses back, and so they're getting fat and lazy. All these horses under the, hip, under the hood. They're getting fat with oil and gunk and residue that needs to be burnt out by making them run faster and getting up fourth and fifth gear at 120 kilometers an hour. But that is a little bit difficult with a cameraman and a camera person on the back judging by these roads. I don't know how long I'd have a camera, let alone a camera person trying to get it into third gear just to open the engine. Of it. No, I probably wouldn't even hear the ah. Oh. <laughs> I'd get to my destination and I'd go, oh, hey, where's God? Hey, I lost it. Camera, camera person. All the batteries bounced down. Monitors in pieces.
cadastro aqui, ele de gato. Temperature on Friday was 103 Fahrenheit. Yesterday was 93. Today is supposed to be supposed to be about 83. Well, glad your temperature is dropping, Ellen. 103 sounds very similar to what I experience in summer at home. My average summer temperature. Hi, warm summer day. It's like nearly 40 degrees Celsius, I think. Pardon? We're currently... Wow. As I say, down in the south. Heat wave of 120 east of London. And I believe your president's playing in Africa at the moment. South Africa. Uh -huh. Mr. President. Madam President. What do you call the First Lady? Madam President. No, I mean your director. Madam. You don't call her Michelle. Unless you're her sister. Welcome to Africa, President and First Lady Obama. Uh, there are a few people that choose right group of things that are making a few ways for whatever reason. Whatever happens in the world, there's always going to be somebody that objects to it. And they might. Because that's freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of... Freedom of... It's just freedom. That is freedom. Wait, 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 wait. head ranger at Juma was Charles Gometti, who was my tracker at Rookie Ranger. I hired him when I was running 
a little camp up in the north about 17, 18 years ago. And I gave Charles his first job. And then at Transpy, that another love presenter that we had at Wild Earth by the name of Patrick Gumedi, who a lot of you may remember, particularly for his giggle. Charles' brother. Charlie Man is back in school. He must have been on long leave or something. He hasn't been on the radio at all. I've been here. That's the first day I've heard him. That's funny because I was listening to a voice earlier on. Hello, please. Three, four, six, seven, eight. I think this is the same small group that come into camp. But I was listening to the radio earlier and it sounded like someone who I was trying to place and uh, the intonation and uh, the, the mannerism and it suddenly occurred to me when I heard his voice now that's a child could be I didn't get much more than five miles an hour in first gear, but it's, it's got the revs up a little bit. It's this open road. And Shaking her head, saying no. Not in the way. Good. Nice one, okay. Find the lions. They're eating zebra at the moment. She puts her head in the grass and carries on eating and says, I know. This is how much I get. Oh, by the way, I had a look at the track. Something last night, and the only track was the Daker track. There are zebra, zebra, and there are buffalo tracks from that buffalo, but there's nothing else. And of course, the Nyala. Yeah, it was. 
makes sense because I'm bumped into that Daker there. Just talking about an hour after dinner, we we're making our way back as a wildebeest. And something ran, it was dark. Something running away. I had a little bit of Between our cabin and the kitchen, there were always animals there. In fact, Becky was big. Yala there the other day. Today, I poked my head out my window and there was a Yala right below my window. They have become quite. There's Billy. Look, there's Billy as we say goodbye. Hello, Mrs. Billy. We want to say hello to baby Billy. Full the beast. Say goodbye to everybody now. There we go, everyone. We were wondering what happened to little Billy. And the rest of the herd about to cross the road. Not the rest of the herd. Only two more members of the herd. That kind of brings us to the end of the day, actually. I haven't seen a bat yet. Uh, no doubt they'll be coming out soon. But... There aren't even the usual night sounds starting. It's a very, very quiet evening. Normally you get Franklin calling and saying goodnight and some of the nocturnal things starting to call but there's actually not very much sound at all tonight. Distant Franklin, that restores my faith that they're still around. So we'll see you in the morning, my morning, 6.30 again. Monday morning, 6.30. Sounds great. Hope you'll be with us and uh, I'll be back here. Hands on the wheel, looking for tracks and hunting the animals. Sorry, I banged the stereo. That probably made a noise in the microphone. Thanks, Laszlo on camera. Thank you, Becky, back in final control. And thank all of you out there. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. Hope you continue to have a lovely weekend, the rest of us. From Wild Earth, goodbye, everyone. Here at Thornybush. Bye.